hey there guys and welcome back on this week's show a spline jig for your table saw now it wasn't too long ago on the show that i did a project that i needed to use my old spline jig and of course it's not set up for this saw it was for an older table saw and i asked the question on that show should I update this spline jig? And it was an overwhelming yes from all of you. So here we are today, and that is what we're going to do. And it all starts off with some measurements over at the table saw. Now this design is meant to ride on top of your existing table saw fence. So the very first measurement that we're going to require will be the width. Now you'll want to try to make this as accurate as you possibly can uh, because we want a snug fit here for our jig to fit on our fence. And it looks like mine is four inches wide. You are also going to require the height of your fence. So we'll just take that measurement here. And this one you can leave a little loose. So this one looks like it's 2 and 11 sixteenths off the surface of the table. So those are the two measurements that we're going to need from the fence. Four inches wide for me and 2 and 11 sixteenths high. Make sure that you get your measurements if you're building it for your specific fence. Well, the bulk of this project will be made from three quarter inch thick plywood. And I have what will be the main backboard for our jig here. And it's three quarters of an inch thick and it's 12 inches by 12 inches. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to put a center line on our backboard from the top to the bottom. And while we're at it with drawing lines, we're going to place from the bottom of our board a line at two inches right across. And now using a 45 square or a combination square, we're going to, from our center line right down here at the base, we're going to place lines at 45 degrees out from that line to the right and to the left. Now you want to be careful with these. Make sure that you're accurate with these lines. And that is essentially all the layout for the backboard. But what do we do with it? Well, the first thing that you want to do is we want to take measurements of this triangle that you have created right here and this one that you've created on the other side. You want to take those measurements and we're going to cut pieces of three quarter inch ply to the exact same dimensions as those two triangles. And eventually those blocks will get mounted right here, but we're not going to do that just yet. What we need to do now is we need to put these aside and we're going to flip our board over, paying attention to where the bottom is. And at the bottom of our board, we're going to draw a horizontal line all the way across at the same dimension that we measured for the height of our fence. In my case, it's 2 and 11 sixteenths. Now at this point, what we're going to do is right at this line on this side of it, we're going to cut a dado that will be the same thickness as our ply and we're going to cut it at three eighths of an inch deep. And there we have our main board with our dado cut in it. Now I just used a stack dado blade. I know that some of you guys don't have them in your region, don't worry about it. Just get a three quarter inch diameter router bit, a straight bit, set your router table fence, and you can easily cut this three eighths deep dado. I would suggest doing it in stages, maybe at one eighth of a at a time to prevent excessive tear out, that's all. So 
Now that I have this done, I've also cut a second board, identical to the first one. The same dimensions, 12 by 12, with the identical dado cut in it. But this will be our backboard, and this is going to house our handle. So with this handle board, we'll call it, I want to leave an inch of material on top of our dado before we ever get involved with marking out a handle. So we have three and a half here for, you know what, I'm gonna leave an inch and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over and I'm going to place a mark from the bottom at five inches up. And now it's time to mark our handle. So I have this template here for a handle and you may be saying, well, wait a second, where'd you get that template? Guys, this is not me being some kind of a genius. I traced a handsaw. I use this handle on almost all of my jigs. Uh, I've carefully cut out this template to use and reuse. That handle for the um, handsaw is time tested, tried and true. So why are we trying to fix something that's not broken? So there we go. I'm gonna trace that out just like that. And all I wanna do just to sort of soften this a little bit is I'm gonna get my circle template and I'm gonna round off this side here to blend it a little easier. And I'm gonna round this side right here. Again, so it's not a sharp valley in here. I'm gonna round it off. And then we're gonna take it over to the scroll saw. We're gonna cut along our line at five inches and then transition up into the handle and cut out our handle. So using a number seven reverse tooth blade, we're just gonna cut this out and uh, when we're done, I'll see you over at the bench. Well, to finish off this handle, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a trim router and using a quarter inch roundover bit, I'm gonna round the inside of the handle and all the way around this top face, not our ends and not our bottom, but I'm gonna do all of this on both sides of the board and give them both a quarter inch roundover. That'll really soften it up. This is the sharp edge is hard on the hands to use. That quarter inch roundover will really make it more comfortable. You may also notice that I have several drafts here of where I tried to transition it onto our board here. And I eventually decided on using French curves to gently slope this up to um, my handle. So you don't need to use a circle template. I felt the circle temp template was still too harsh for what I wanted. So I'm much happier with this design. And then give your handle a good sanding. Well, now that we have that handle sanded, we're gonna put it off to the side and turn our concentration back to our original boards. And what we're going to do with this set up here is I'm going to mount those triangles. Any time that you can use the equipment you have to free up your hands and assist you, especially in a glue up, you should try to take advantage of that. And I've done that here uh, by clamping in place at the bottom of my board, a straight edge, edge a 12 inch straight edge, and then I've taken a one, two, three setup block placed there at the two inch side 
So now I know that this is exactly two inches up from the bottom and all I need to do is place my square in, the, in here, sandwich everything together and then I can set my nails and we're done. And at this point, just clean up your squeeze out and then you can mount the other side. Now with those pieces drying up, we're going to place a mark on our center line, six inches down from the top. Once we get that line, using our combination square, we're going to place a 45 degree line from that point up to each of our corners here. You don't need it all the way up like what I just did, but just get your line there, probably extending out a couple inches anyway from your center line. And now at one and three eighths from your center line, we will place a mark. And then at three and three eighths out on that line, we will place a mark on both of these uh, 45s that we just drew. And now at each one of those marks, we are going to center punch it. We're going to take it over to the drill press and I want to drill a 5 16 inch diameter hole, a through hole at each one of those four points. Well, what are those holes for? I'm going to show you. Remember last week's show? If you don't remember last week's show, you should really stop this video right here and go back and watch it because I showed you how to make shop made toggle clamps. And that is what those holes are for. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to place a quarter 20 bolt and a washer through each one of these holes down through the clamps. And then on the back side, I don't want these to be permanently mounted um, only because if I have a frame application that doesn't fit in this jig, I want to be able to, um, to remove them or shift them or what have you. So all I've got is a couple of quarter 20 threaded jig knobs just like this. You can use these, I had these store bought ones up on the shelf or you can use shop made ones. I've got a video for that too, if you're not sure how to make them. But regardless, this is what those holes are for. And you can just tighten them down like that and now you have clamping on your jig. So both of these will get installed here. I'm gonna take them off for now because we need to assemble these, uh, this entire jig and we don't want these in place when we assemble it. So there is one more piece to cut. Let me just put this aside. There is one more piece to cut. And that piece is another length of three quarter inch thick plywood. It is 12 inches long. And if you remember, the width of our fence was four inches wide. This piece is four inches wide plus the depth of our dado in each of the boards. So three eighths plus the one on the other board, three eighths. This board is four and three quarters of an inch wide. So we now need to assemble this. So all we're going to do to assemble this spline jig is our four and three quarter wide board will sit in one dado. Our other board or our board with our handle will sit in place just like this and we will glue it and screw it together. Um, I'm going to drill some holes here for countersunk number eight screws and this way it'll be nice and secure right in through into the middle of our cross piece. Before you do that, however, take it over to your table saw, test it on your fence and make sure that it slides easily but other than that, sand everything really well at this point and let's get this glued and screwed together. And if you followed along, you should have something that looks like this. So how do you use it? So I'm going to use a frame that I've already made just to demonstrate the use. 
We'll go under the assumption that my fence is set. All you do is you place your frame in the jig, resting on our little triangles. Make sure that it's firmly seated and then lock it in place with our shop made toggle clamps. That thing's not going anywhere. You can pick up the jig with it if you want. You basically from there set the height of your spline in your frame and follow through with the cut. When you're done with the cut, you rotate it 90 degrees, just like that, place it in the jig, clamp it down and follow through with the cut. Do it all the way around until you get your splines cut. And that is how our spline jig works. And there you have it. A frame spline jig for your table saw. Guys, this project um, is a very useful one if you want to make picture frames. You can even use this one for boxes. The only difference is I'm not so sure that I would go so far as to use the toggle clamps to hold down a box. There's just not enough support there. However, it can hold it in place as the corner of the box sits on the surface of the table saw. The saw itself would support it, so there's nothing wrong with using it to cut splines in a box. Here's the deal. Those shop-made toggle clamps, they're 100% optional. If you don't want to make those and you don't want to use them, then don't use them. It's as simple as that. The backboard that the frame sits on in order to cut the splines is large enough and there's enough surface area there that there is absolutely no reason that you could not use, say, a quick grip clamp or a hand screw clamp any kind of clamp on that backboard. That's the reason the backboard is there, to give you something to clamp onto. The fact that I was able to incorporate my shop-made toggle clamps is just a bonus for me. Now, with that being said, with those toggle clamps in place, the widest frame slat that I can accommodate here is three and a quarter inches. Beyond that, the base plate of our shop made toggle clamps get in the way. However, that's why they're removable with your jig knobs because there's going to be applications where it's going to be in the way and it's going to end up being useless. And when that's the case, undo the thumb screws of the jig knobs, remove those toggle clamps and use a clamp on the backboard to make your bigger projects. But honestly, a three and a quarter wide slat on a frame, that is a wide slat. That's, that's a considerable frame. So for the most part, this will serve your needs. Here's the other thing. If you make big frames and you need to raise your saw blade higher than two inches, well, you may want to raise those triangles that we mounted on there or the frame supports a little higher. The frames that I make rarely have uh, a spline that is deeper than two inches, so I wasn't too worried about it. What is the difference between this one and my old one? Well, the big difference, of course, is it's made to fit my current table saw's fence, whereas my old one fit my old table saw's fence. But the big difference here is with my old jig, while the bed or the support for the frame was wider and it did accommodate a wider piece, like a box or that sort of thing, what it also did was it came right down to the tabletop and allowed the saw blade to cut directly through the jig. It didn't really bother me. It kind of gave it a zero clearance kind of a feel to it. But with this new one, I didn't really want to deal with that. I didn't want to have it cutting through the jig. So I had to come up with an arbitrary measurement of two inches above the tabletop for my spline cuts. And as I said, if that doesn't suit you, adjust it to your needs. With that being said, this whole jig can be modified to suit your needs. You don't have to follow my dimensions. You don't have to follow the size. You don't have to use a traced out hand, uh, hand saw handle. You can do whatever you please. 
this is your jig. All I want to point out to you is that this is the way that I make them and they work really well. I've been using them for years this way and I have never ever had a problem. Um, one thing I will point out to you is that if you're cutting splines in a frame or a box, chances are you are ripping into that stock, in which case get yourself a ripping blade. Don't use uh, you know, a, a cross cut blade to try to cut splines. You won't get very good results. You'll dull your blade sooner because it's going to be overheating trying to cut through it and you're going to burn your wood. This is the other problem and you don't want to be burning up a frame that you're making for something special. Guys, I'm glad that you uh, you put your voices out there and had it so that I revamped my spline jig. For years, I've been using the other one just up against the fence and you guys essentially kind of forced me into having to rebuild it. And I'm very happy with the new prototype. Uh, I think it's gonna serve me well. One thing you want to keep in mind though, guys, when you're making this, make sure your jig is square because a jig is meant to repeat processes and make that repetition easier. But remember that if your jig is out of a square, every cut you make from then on in, you will be repeating an out of square cut. So make sure that you get a square on there and verify that this thing is right on the money. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. This one's been a lot of fun. It's a fairly quick project. It's an easy one, and it's a great way to use up a little bit of scrap wood around the shop. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. I hope that you've enjoyed today's show and its content. And honestly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.